Good morning. And welcome back in the sanctuary. How does it feel? Good? Awesome. Warm, yeah. But there is a lot of air flow here, so no worries about that. <laughs> Just so you know, Pastor Matt is um, at the homecoming uh, at Cal California Lutheran University this weekend. He's not fleeing the rain. He'll be back on Friday. Uh, latest, no, he'll be back tomorrow, but for the Friday party, just in time. There's a lot going on. So if you look at the back of your bulletin, you have this week's um, schedule, all the things we have to offer. Um, I just want to point out our last of the three new members classes this Thursday, and we will then welcome the new members, I think, on the coming Sunday. We have our 70th birthday celebration, and I promise the rain will have stopped by then. So we will be able to celebrate outside in the courtyard, 6 to 8 on Friday. It's a drop-in reception. If you haven't RSVP'd, though, we need your RSVP for, to, to be able to calculate a little. Um, use the e-note, use the QR code in the bulletin, uh, like in the back side in inside back cover what in, inside back cover no that doesn't sound right <laughs> and um, or use your welcome card in the pew if you're always like oh I want to do this and I always forget use your welcome card and put the welcome card in the offering plate and then on Sunday it's Reformation Sunday and it's pledge Sunday so I promise Pastor Matt will talk a lot less about the capital campaign after that Sunday. Um, but come and make your pledge. Your pledge cards should arrive in your mailbox by this week if you haven't received them already. At the end of October means we're also at the beginning of no November, and that means All Saints Sunday is coming up. And this year for All Saints Sunday, as we're back together in the sanctuary, we want to do something special and remember especially those that have died during the pandemic not only of COVID, but those that we couldn't grieve for as a congregation. And so we invite you to submit names of your loved ones that died any time, but also or especially those that have died in the last 18 months. Submit those names to the staff. There is a form in your e-note. Put the date of their death and a photo if you have it so that we can use it for the slideshow, but we also want to do something special here in the sanctuary. Please submit them by next week so that we can start working on it. It's quite a lot to do, so we need a little time to get ready. And then another announcement is um, I invite those of you that have lost a child, no matter what age that child was, um, or if you are a sibling, that loss uh, that of, a, of someone who has died, or if you're a grandparent, I invite you to come to the service uh, for surviving families on the eve of, of All Saints Sunday, November 6th. We we'll have a small service here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Life is just happening all around us. Good things and sad things are happening. We have a lot of prayer requests this week. If you um, know where to find our prayer form uh, or prayer for the weeks, it's on page 13. So there you can read all our prayer requests for this Sunday. I want to point out especially the Wetterson family and Wetterson's father died the past week. And we will remember him and their family in the prayers today. But there are so many more people that we pray for. And um, I invite you to just yeah, keep them in your prayers. And that's it. Please stand, Israel. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart.
God our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and grief. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. All have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes us righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. O God, maker of all things, through your goodness you have blessed us with many gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we gather for sharing your love with the world through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <laughs>
eternal light shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I'm going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come, and with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Hebrews. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, 
he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Word of God, word of life. Please stand if you're able for the reading of the gospel. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. <clears throat> and I'd love to invite any children to come over to the baptismal font. Come on down. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> baptismal font. There you go. Here, you guys can stand right over there. And you stand right over there and let the little ones come up. Awesome. I love the circle that we formed. Okay. Important question. Has anyone ever told you to be quiet? Yeah. A lot. And did you listen? Yeah. Well, sometimes. 50-50? Has anyone ever told you Melly, has anyone ever said, shh, did you listen? Did you be quiet? Yeah, you're a good listener. They need to take a lesson from you. Yeah. In our story today, that also happens. Jesus is there with his friends, and there's a large crowd of people. And there's this guy named Bartimaeus. Weird name, right? Do we know any Bartimaeuses? No. no. So Bartimaeus is blind. He can't see. And he knows that Jesus is there. And then there's this large crowd. And so he's thinking, I want Jesus to heal me, but how do I get Jesus' attention? I know. I'm going to yell. So he yells in this big crowd, Jesus, have mercy on me. And everyone is like, shh. Jesus is too important to deal with you. Shh, Bartimaeus, quiet, quiet, quiet. But Bartimaeus is like, I need to be healed. So again, he says, Jesus, have mercy on me. And everyone says, shh, keep it quiet. Jesus is too important. He's too busy to help you. And he's like, Jesus, have mercy on me. And Jesus hears him. <laughs> yeah. And he goes to Bartimaeus, and he heals him. And so Bartimaeus can see again. And this is a good lesson for us because sometimes it is important to be quiet. Sometimes if our shh or please be quiet, it's important for us to do that. But if we're hurt or we're in need or we're really sad or something's going wrong, it's pretty important that we get help, right? And we might have to call out, I need help or please come help me. And... That is so important to God, and it's so important to people who love you. So sometimes it's really important to call out for help and to not always listen when people tell you to be quiet. 
if people tell you to be quiet in church, you definitely have to be quiet. But if you need help or you're in need, it's okay to ask for help because you are so, so important to God the way that Bartimaeus was really important to Jesus. I'll answer it afterwards because we're going to pray. Let's say a prayer. It's just we're going to say a prayer. That's important. I know. I don't want her to hit her head on me. Oh, that's very good. Dad's here watching. Okay, let's say a prayer. God, we thank you for listening when we call out, for having patience with us, and for helping us to know when we need to call out for help. We thank you for loving us and being kind to us always. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, go back to your seat. Thanks for looking out, Drew. There's a man sitting by the roadside, just sitting there. He can't do anything else. They say he can't see. That's why he's sitting there. He can't really do anything without his sight. He can't serve at the synagogue or make himself, use, himself useful in the city. They say he's not worth bothering with. There's this man sitting by the roadside, just sitting there, day after day after day. And at night, what does he do during the night? Where does he go? Does he have a house to live in, a bed to sleep in, a meal to share with someone? There is just this man sitting by the roadside, just outside of Jericho. He's on his own, all the time, alone, sitting there. All day, people are passing him, day after day. It must be lonely, out there on the roadside, all on his own. But for sure, he must not be a good man. He must have done something to deserve this. Isn't it proof enough that he doesn't have anyone around him, no friend, no family? No. He can be a good man. The man is sitting by the roadside. He seems to be waiting. What is he waiting for? That this day passes? That all his day pass? That a miracle happens? He is sitting there, waiting for someone to take notice, waiting for people to be kind to him. But he seems to be waiting for more. For what? Someone? Something? There is a man sitting by the roadside just outside of Jericho. They know him around here. He's a beggar. Because that's all he can do. So reach in your pocket and give what you want to spare. He doesn't need much because he doesn't have much. For him, everything will do. Everything will make a difference. Give him the things you don't need anymore. The apple that got bruised. The sandwich you got for lunch that was too much. The change that's been living in your pockets for weeks. For him, it will be like Christmas. There is this man sitting by the roadside. His name is Bartimaeus. He must be someone's son. There must have been a mother expecting him giving birth to him in pain and nursing him until he was old enough to be weaned. There must have been parents who gave him his name, Bartimaeus, who cared for him, who cradled him, who sang him to sleep, who, kid, who kissed him goodnight. Bartimaeus is sitting by the roadside, his head bent towards the dusty ground, day after day, breathing, listening, breathing, listening. Listening to the sound of the feet that pass by, big feet, small feet, with sandals, bare feet, heavy steps, light steps, running, limping along, supported by a stick. The tripling feet of goats and sheep, the trot of donkeys, sniffling dogs. Would someone stop and talk to him? Maybe some old acquaintance from the time when he wasn't blind. 
Bartimaeus is sitting by the roadside, covered in his dusty, ready cloak that he wears against the scorching sun during the day. And at nights, he wraps the cloak around his shivering body. Cold nights can be long and lonely and dark. The cloak is his most valuable possession, his only possession. Bartimea sits by the roadside when he hears the commotion. Someone is coming. Someone? No, many. Many are coming. A big crowd is leaving Jericho. So many feet. The dust they raise gets into his mouth and nose. He covers them with his cloak. Too many feet. What if they don't see him sitting here and trample him down? He should better get out of the way. But Emmaus is about to get up from his place by the roadside when a name catches his attention. Someone says, it's Jesus of Nazareth. But Emmaus' excitement is instantaneous. This is the moment he has been waiting for, hoping for. This is the person he was longing to meet, a miracle. He doesn't need to think. He calls from the top of his lung, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me and his voice is loud. It carries. They hear him crying out, but feel disturbed by him. What does he want now? What has he got to say to Jesus? There are others that Jesus needs to hear first. They are more important. Be quiet. But Bartimaeus, sitting by the roadside, doesn't care anymore about those who give when they feel like it. In this moment, he knows that he has the right to be seen and heard. And he calls out again, more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Mercy is what he wants? Son of David, a king, the promised one? They stop. Their heads turn. In the silence that follows, he can hear Jesus' voice. Call him here. But before they could call him, now, using their soft voice, take heart, get up, he's calling you. He's already on his feet, throwing his cloak off and as fast as he can navigates through the crowd that has now opened for him. Bartimaeus is standing on the road that leaves Jericho. Jesus is standing in front of him, so close that he can hear him breathe. What do you want me to do for you? My teacher, make me see again. And Jesus declares, go, your faith has made you well. And immediately, bright sunlight floods his eyes. He squints. Bartimaeus is standing on the road that leaves Jericho. The excited crowd has just witnessed his healing, and now they are trying to get Jesus to do, to do for them what he just did for Bartimaeus, to be seen, to be heard, but Jesus moves on. Slowly, but his intention is clear. The road is too long. He has to go now. Bartimaeus doesn't wait a second and doesn't waste a thought. He follows Jesus on the way, leaving behind his only and very valuable possession, his cloak. Bartimaeus is on the road, follows Jesus' path to Jerusalem, to the cross, being a disciple. Well, it's easy for him, they say, to get up and go and leave. He doesn't have anything to lose. He can only win. And well, yeah, his cloak. Someone surely will give him another one. Easy for him, they say, after he spent so much time alone and lonely, hungry, thirsty, sweating, freezing, and blind. Easy because he doesn't have the same burden that they do. The house, the family, social obligations. It's just too hard to leave that behind. Buddy Mayers is on the road. Again and again. There is a Buddy Mayers that is blind but sees and knows and waits to be called. And again and again, there are those in the crowd that order Bartimaeus to be quiet because 
he's not that important. I sometimes sit by the roadside, blind but seeing, crying for help and waiting to be called. And when the call comes, I follow. I sometimes stand in the crowd or pass by, give and notice and be kind when it suits me, taking a rest in the comfortable shadow because I can. Sometimes, though, this feels like blindly stumbling along. Following Jesus is exhausting, challenging. But if we walk together as a congregation, as a community, as disciples, we can help each other. We may not be, we may not be able to heal each other or with each other or through each other. We will remain partially blind and broken. But we can support each other to get up again and take the next step and the next. Amen. Please stand with your
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. Set free from sin and death, and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Risen One, we give you thanks for congregations and ministries throughout the world that serve as centers of prayer and action. Empower missionaries, teachers, healers, evangelists, and all who are sent to share your song of joy. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, we give you thanks for rain and life that springs from water. Soak and fertilize all soils from rooftop gardens to prairie farmlands, to patio planters to fertile valleys, and bless all who lovingly tend them. Lord, in your mercy. Ruling One, we give you thanks for leaders of nations who work to build up the common good. Strengthen efforts of reconciliation among all nations, especially in Iran, Afghanistan, and between Taiwan and China, that peace extends in every direction. Lord, in your mercy. Healing One, we give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Comfort and strengthen all who struggle with chronic pain. Send healing and relief to all who are burdened or are sick, especially Willie and Sybil, Michael, Nicholas, Sandra, and Ernst. Be with all those who grieve, especially Anne and her family, and all those we name in our hearts out loud now. Lord, in your mercy. Providing one, we give you thanks for all who provide for others. Inspire generosity in your people so that we may carry out the work of making disciples of all nations. Lord, in your mercy. Living one, we give you thanks for the saints who have increased our faith, especially John. Give us courage to follow in hope until you gather us all around your table of abundance. Lord, in your mercy. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace. You can make the sign of the peace, an elbow bump with those around you.
Please stand as read. Healing God, you call us to cast aside the cloak of our poverty, that we may follow you in faith and hope. Open our eyes to see your glory. Speak your word of transformation and truth. Send your spirit upon your church, that in this holy meal we may be turned from despair to joy and from doubt to wonder. By that same spirit, sanctify this bread and this cup that they may be for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Generous God, make your church holy, that it may bear your aching will to you and may reveal your longing heart to the world. To all who have known loss or suffering or disaster, bring a double portion of your abundant love that every eye may see and every tongue may tell how great is your almighty hand that draws all things to completion in you, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Please come forward to receive your communion elements, take them back to your pew and we will commune together. Gluten-free elements are in the middle of the basket and I will take a tray down to those that are not able to come forward. All is ready and all are welcome. Please stand, Mr. Abel. You can now remove your mask. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Please put your mask back, mask back on. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God who cares for all life abundantly, generation after generation, bless you and keep you in the presence of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
for our coffee, donuts, our chocolate, lemonade, and our well-ventilated narthex. And then go in peace. You are sent to love. Thanks.